Welcome back to Run the Atlas. Today, we're back with another things you need to know before you go video, and we're talking about Maui. I just returned from a trip here, so I learned a lot of new things about visiting Maui that I'm gonna pass on to you. So stay tuned to the end to capture all the details. Hit the like and subscribe button if you're enjoying these tips. And why visit Hawaii's second largest island? It's because of the pure nature. You have mountains volcanoes over 10,000 feet tall, lush rainforest, black sand beaches, beautiful snorkeling, whale watching, world-class golf. This island is great for families. Culturally, you have a very small town rural vibe. It's a little less commercial than Waikiki and it's got a lot going on. Getting there. Regarding the COVID restrictions, Hawaii safe travel restrictions ended on March 25th, meaning you no longer need to complete an additional form or COVID requirements for domestic passengers. If you click back on my Oahu video, there were some massive lines just getting into Hawaii as a domestic traveler. So this is great. It makes everything more expedited. If you're looking for inexpensive flights to Maui, check out the April, May season or September, November season. This is off season, so you'll find some cheap flights from California. It ranges about the $200 range, which is pretty inexpensive for going across the Pacific Ocean. However, Maui is going to get you with those hotel and resort fees. You're gonna be allocating a lot of your money to these resorts and the resort fees. Some of these hotels can be upwards of $800 a night. The resort fees can add an additional around $40 per night, and sometimes there's parking fees as well. We opted to stay at the Courtyard Marriott at the airport, and that was around $300 a night, just to give you an idea of the cost. One of the major things that surprised me about Maui is that all of the beaches here are open to the public. None of these beaches are private, so even if you're not staying at a top resort, you can still access those beaches which is great if you want to check out some of the warmest and most iconic beaches. They are all open to the public. Now there are some hostels and some backpacker hotels and you can find those around the areas of Wailuku or Paia. So keep those in mind if you want something a little bit more authentic and a little more inexpensive. So when you're in Maui, you need to do one of these four things at the very least or else you haven't really been to Maui. So in no particular order, the most stunning experiences here in Maui, number one, the road to Hana. You're going to need to allocate a full day to visit the road to Hana. And this is extraordinary, especially if you're into rainforests and road trips and adventure, you can rent a Jeep. It's gonna take you about five hours one way to get there. It's only 52 miles long, but there's hairpin turns, bridges, if you go the back route, it's extremely isolated. It's not very well paved and also not recommended to go this way. The normal route to get to Hana, the Hana Highway, is very crowded, especially in the morning. When you're going this route, you're going through an area of rainforest. This gets about 250 inches of rain per year. You're going through guava forests, lush landscapes, and less than a thousand people live in this area. You can actually stay overnight in Hana, and you can do that if you want something a little more authentic and off the beaten path. One of the beaches that I went to that I highly recommend, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, is Waiaana Panapa Black Sand Beach. There's no lifeguards here. It's bring your own picnic, and it is extraordinary. One of the top experiences here in Maui is Haleakala. Point your GPS to the Haleakala Summit and get ready to be awe-inspired by these views. You're going over 10,000 feet high at this summit, so definitely be prepared for altitude, bring lots of water, bring layers because it gets chilly up there. But as you're going through this beautiful volcano, this active volcano, the only active volcano on Maui, and it last erupted 600 to 400 years ago found some hiking trails the air is really clean really thin as well you can definitely feel the altitude this is a very mythological place so maui is said to be a demigod who pulled hawaii up from the ocean floor with his hook and went to the top of haleakala and wrangled the sun to slow it down to create time and it's very spiritual when you go there 
feels like you're on a different level, like you've ascended into heaven or something. It's very interesting to view the crater of the volcano too. It's like looking into the desert and it's said that this crater is so large that it could hold the entire urban area of Manhattan. <sighs> there is a hike that goes through the crater and it's called the Shifting Sands Hike. This is 11 miles out and back and there's no shade and it's a very long trail. If you're up for adventure, check that out. The next thing you wanna do in Maui is get out onto the water and you wanna go snorkeling or scuba diving. And Maui has some of the best tropical fish, sea turtles, moray eels, octopus, whales, dolphins. You can see colorful butterfly fish, all the different colors of the rainbow under the water. You can take the snorkeling cruises and they'll take you off the coast to the crater of Molokini. It's an explosion of fish under the water. It's unlike anything I've ever seen, definitely worth the trip. The next adventure is the Iao Valley State Monument. It kind of looks like you're in Thailand or something like that. There's the iconic pinnacle or needle mountain, and it's a lush rainforest on the west side of Maui. We are at the Iao Valley State monument and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that um, <laughs> but a very big battle was fought here the battle of Kepanawai and it united the Hawaiian Islands it was a battle between the chief of Oahu versus the chief of Maui the chief of Maui lost uh oh it covers 4,000 acres so if you want to explore Maui by foot I definitely recommend getting on your hiking shoes and a swimsuit and checking out the Iao Valley there are some beautiful hikes here. You go through taro farms and ferns and palms. And alongside there's this river and they even have waterfalls. It's beautiful for swimming. To get here, you go up the mountain a little bit. It's a $5 parking fee and it's very off the grid. I notice that the culture here, it's very laid back. They're kind of on island time. You'll see a lot of food trucks and casual cuisine along the roads. There's chickens everywhere. A lot of the local people go camping on the beach. So you'll notice a lot of people parked on the beach and just staying overnight and having a cookout. If you want that more local feel, there's two towns that I recommend. It's Wailuku and Paia. And both of these towns have excellent cuisine and coffee shops. There's more of a down to earth vibe, lots of art shops, more of a hippie backpacker culture. So if you wanna check out a more authentic, less resort vibe with less tourists, check out those two towns. Now the most populated area of Maui is going to be the West Coast. So if you wanna to avoid tourists, situate yourself on a different area, which leads me to where to stay when you're in Maui. The island kind of looks like a figure eight. So you have two mountains on either side and a valley in between. And I'm gonna put a map right here. On the west side, you have Ka'anapali. It's very tropical, warm beaches, great for swimming. You can go to Kapalua as well. If you want a more luxurious vibe, continue down south and go to Waialea. They have shopping malls here with like the Gucci stores and stuff like that, the Four Seasons. So if you want more of like that high class, world class golf situation, visit Waialea. Next, you can go north of the island. And this is an area where not a lot of tourists go. It's more windy here. So you'll notice a lot of kite beaches, windsurfing beaches. Jaws is here for all of the surfing fans. Central Maui has a lot of wind. This is where the airport is. And so if you continue east, if you're going to Hana, this is where your really exotic black sand beaches are. There's typically no lifeguards and it's very lush and tropical, completely different atmosphere than the other parts of the island. Some interesting facts about Maui. So Maui was recently developed in the 60s. There were about 35,000 people here. So not a lot of resorts. And now there's 165,000 people. Maui also has 10 of the 14 climate zones from rainforest to desert. So you can literally experience almost every type of climate here in Maui without going very far. 
So let's talk about the food. One of the main reasons why you want to visit Hawaii is the food and Maui has some really unique experiences here. So number one, as a tourist, you may be very tempted to visit a luau. And just know that a lot of the luau's here in Maui are very touristy. The oldest luau in Maui is Old Lahaina Luau and bookings can be filled more than six months in advance. And this is the most authentic traditional one. This is where they actually have the pig roast under the ground and they uncover it with the banana leaves. I recommend visiting this one if you do visit a luau. And one of the local people let us know that you can get tickets at Bob's Snorkel Shop if they're not found online. You can find hula dancing outside of luau's. So sometimes you'll see street performers doing it. It just depends on where you are. You might be able to see just as good of a luau experience from the sidelines. Aside from the royal feast of the luau, some of the things you wanna try when you're here, number one, shaved ice and also poke. You can get both of these at Toby's Shaved Ice in Paia. And this was featured on the show Guy Fieri Dive In and Drives. And the shaved ice here is just excellent. They have so many different flavors exotic flavors that you can't get at home, like Li Hing Moi, which is a plum. You can get Lily Koi, which is passion fruit. When you're going up country Maui on the way to Haleakala, you'll notice a number of really cool farms. There's the Lavender Farm. And check that out, because they even have lavender coffee and gorgeous views of the entire valley floor. You have pineapple wine, coffee, and chocolate farms. So definitely check those out. They make great treats to bring home and bring a little piece of Maui back home with you. I hope that you get a chance to visit Maui very soon. This is a very special island and it truly is paradise. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for many more travel videos.